Hi friends, let us understand the compliance aspect with respect to joint development agreement with respect to landowner and with respect to developer. Here I have termed promoter land, landowner means person who gives the land for development of a project is termed as promoter landowner and person who develops the project is termed as promoter developer. Mainly the JD agreements are of two types. It may be on revenue sharing arrangement or it may be on area sharing arrangement. In either of the cases, the JD agreement and declaration in form B from both the parties have to be uploaded at the time of registration. Coming to revenue sharing arrangement, there will be a single RERA designated bank account where all the proceeds of the project will be deposited to that particular account and the 70% of the proceeds will be kept in RERA designated bank account and these monies can be withdrawn as per the procedure laid down in by submitting three certificates that is form 1, 2 and 3 that is architect certificate, engineer certificate and chartered accountant certificate. The promoter developer that is the person who develops the project has to maintain this particular account and he can withdraw the monies from this account and out of the withdrawals of this amount can be paid to the landowner as per their agreement. And in case of area sharing arrangement, there will be two designated bank accounts because the area is shared, the units have been shared between landowner and the developer. So the modus operandi can be like this also where a single check will be obtained in either of the cases whether it is a landowner share or it is a developer share from the customer and while depositing this check the promoter developer has to be kept in mind whether this particular unit belongs to promoter landowner or it is belongs to promoter developer accordingly he can deposit this check in the respective bank accounts and from where the 70% proceeds of this check amount will be going to RERA designated bank account of the landowner or developer as applicable and the monies can be withdrawn. Here whatever the monies amount incurred by the developer, the cost incurred by the developer will be as cost in his cost incurred table. However, the landowner will not incur any cost in developing the project. So his cost will be restricted to the extent of land cost. However, here he can take guideline rate as defined in RERA Act. So to the extent of land cost, the developer, uh, promoter landowner can withdraw the money as and when, as and when he sells the units in order to accommodate as the cost incurred on constructing the project is not captured in owner's landowner's uh, uh, form 3. So in that case, they can uh, landowner and developer can negotiate the terms and take certain amount from developer to the uh, to the landowner. Okay, here there is a catch because landowner is not incurring any cost on the project. So he can negotiate the terms with the promoter, developer and take certain amount as and when he sells the units uh, belongs to the land, him that is landowner. Okay, so here they, whenever the monies has to be withdrawn, respective parties have to submit three certificates that is architect certificate, engineer certificate and chartered accountant certificate and they can withdraw the monies. Hope it is clear. If you have any questions, you please post it in the comments box. I will reply to it. Thank you.